in my very first Total Eclipse was in 1979 in Winnipeg, uh, Canada. And that eclipse actually crossed over parts of the United States. And I remember us talking in 1979 and saying, the next total eclipse that's going to cross the United States is not going to be till 2017. And we thought, that's forever. <laughs> I'll be twice as old as I am now. I mean, that's just an enormous time to think about. And here it is. <laughs> so, uh, it's something I've been thinking about since 1979. So, uh, this is the one I plan for the longest. <laughs> I have been 15 times on the center line. Two of them were annulars, uh, but the other 13 were totals. And I've only been rained out twice, so I've got a pretty good, <laughs> a pretty good track record of being in the right place. So many things in astronomy, the photographs are better than you would see with your natural eyes. So you go to an observatory and you see Saturn, and it's cool, and you can, on a good day, you can see the Cassini's division, but you know, it's still kind of low resolution. Whereas, you know, the photographs we get from space are just awesome of the planets, okay? Eclipses are the other way around. There is not a single photograph that captures the total experience of a total eclipse. Because it's not just your eyes. It's your eyes, it's your skin, the temperatures change, the winds change, it's your hearing, you hear the birds roost, again you can hear the winds change. The shadows change color when when you when it's normally dark, it's sunrise or sunset, and so the light ambient light is kind of reddish. But in a total eclipse, because you don't have that reddish cast, it's it's actually white, but it seems blue <laughs> because it's not red. So you think, why is the sky gray instead of blue? Why are the shadows sharp? Uh, just all sorts of things that are, that are all around you that make it a total body experience and not just something that a photograph uh, captures. In addition, your eyes are such good detectors that with your eyes and an inexpensive pair of binoculars, you can see everything from the, the, the prominences at the surface of the sun to the exterior corona. Whereas if you try to take a photograph of that, if you overexpose it to get the outer corona, you've way overexposed the inner part and you can't see any detail on the prominences. So you have to take a short time exposure to get the prominences, but then you don't get the exterior. So your eyes are such a much better detector, okay? The other thing is your perception. You know how sometimes when the moon is rising or setting and you're seeing it against the horizon, it seems so large? Well, now think about that moon, but now you've got wings on it. So it is three to four times wider than the than the moon normally is. So as you can imagine how big it seems at sunset or sunrise, it looks enormous during an eclipse. And then the other thing is the preparation. You've, you've been planning for this. You've found your location. You've set up your equi equipment. You're all talking about it, you know, and, and this heightened you know, is the cl are the clouds going to break in time, you know? So there's this uncertainty about whether you're actually going to be able to see it that, that puts all of your senses on edge. And, and so it's, it's very much a, a whole body experience and not just something that you look at. Eclipses are all different. Some eclipses happen right at sunrise, and those are have their beauty because you can get photographs of things in the foreground. 
some eclipses happen at sunset and again you can get some great shots of things in the foreground uh, the ones that happen near noon though have another another uh, effect that happens with an eclipse that's near noon like this one will be and I first saw this really well in Libya in 2006 we had a eclipse that was near noon and we were on a desert there was nothing to the west of us but sand and I told the people in my group I said don't bother taking pictures of this coming in enjoy it somebody else will take a better picture okay <laughs> you need to just experience this and, and so I told them as we're starting to get narrowing down as we're starting to approach that diamond ring watch the west and as that totality arrived, it was a column of black, like the darkest, biggest tornado you ever saw. Straight up, coming at you at 2,000 miles an hour. And when this column of black washes over you, it just makes your heart go up in your throat and you naturally tip your head back and when you tip your head back it is now full total and you just go oh my gosh that is it was just like it washed over you it was and and I mean everybody went I'm so glad you told me to do that <laughs> because it was just so spectacular a phone makes a lousy camera uh, in, and the way people should practice is on the full moon. See if you can take a good picture with your camera, no matter what it is, of the full moon. And what you find is that most phones, most cheap cameras, way overexpose. And 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 in the moon picture, you'll won't see any of the craters. You'll just see this white blob. So you have to be able to adjust the iris so that you can bring down the intensity uh, and you also want it so that it does not try to focus you want to be able to manually set it to focus on infinity so some cameras that have scenes they'll have a, one scene that's called sunrise sunset that one works so if you've got an inexpensive camera and you you can't manually adjust the focus and you can't manually adjust the iris, put it on sunrise, sunset, and that usually does a pretty good job. The other thing is put a piece of tape over the flash of your camera. I've had way too many people with idiot, tele <laughs> idiot cameras that cr make a picture during totality and ruin everybody else's experience because they couldn't turn off the flash. <laughs> so I always take all the people in my group, put them in a closet. If they, if they can't turn off their flash, <laughs> they get a piece of tape. <laughs> and the other thing is no moving around. Once, it, once you're within five or six minutes of totality, I tell all my people, find a spot, do not move. So you're gonna bump into somebody's equipment <laughs> if you walk around during when it gets really dark. So find a spot, stay there and, until after totality is over. So this device is a bracket that allows you to take any good quality binoculars that has a mounting hole in its main axis and allows you to take that binocular and mount it on a regular photographic tripod. So you can see my quick release for my tripod here. So you screw the tripod into one end and you screw this into your binoculars and now you can put your binoculars on your tripod and have them with filters and you want to have the filters for the partial phases uh, by having it on a tripod then you can share this with everybody coming by okay because they don't have to touch it once you've put that filter on your binoculars you won't be able to see anything but the sun. Everything else will be completely black. And so you're gonna, you know, the first time you pick up a pair of binoculars with a, with a filter on it, you're gonna have trouble finding the sun, okay? So if you've got a zoom binoculars, always zoom out first, find the sun, and then zoom in. And that allows you to, <laughs> to keep it in the field of view, and you only have to 
adjust it slowly as the earth turns. Uh, and, but this one device, and it only is $20, $25, is, is really important. And a good pair of binoculars is the best astronomical equipment uh, to see this eclipse. I use projection a lot. But the problem with projection is that it does actually heat up your, your binoculars. And you've got that path of light going through your telescope. And if somebody accidentally puts their face in that path, uh, that can really be bad for their eyes. Uh, so if, anytime I use a, a projection, I'll have people put your hand in that light path and feel how hot it makes your hand. And I say, now think about putting your eye there, okay? <laughs> so a, a projection one, you have to monitor constantly. Whereas if you've got a nice binoculars with, a, with the right filters on front, you know, you can sort of let people look and, you know, they're not going to accidentally hurt themselves. But of course, it's never safe to stare at the sun directly. But when it's a... Uh, partial eclipse and part of that sun is blocked, your blink ref reflex is not as helping you out, okay? Because it doesn't seem as bright, but every bit of the sun that's still visible is as bright per pixel <laughs> as the whole sun would have been. So uh, people in, can end up with a little stripe burned into their retinas uh, and that doesn't go away fast. The first time I saw a total eclipse, I was doing some photography and uh, I'd also had my binoculars hanging around my neck. I was so stunned when I finally got a chance to look at it that I forgot to put my binoculars on. <laughs> so I tell everybody, I don't care what kind of camera equipment you got, have a pair of binoculars around your neck. You don't have to have filters on every Thing you do. He had one pair of binoculars on a tripod that people can share because the partial phase takes a long time. It's an hour partial going in and an hour partial going out. So you can have one pair of binoculars that everybody can see the progress of the partial. But once it gets total, it's only two minutes long. So you need to be there in the moment and experiencing it. And you don't want to share a pair of binoculars, okay? So you've got your binoculars on your neck and ready to go. And that's the best equipment you can take and it's not expensive. And during totality and only while it's total, you can use any pair of binoculars, any telescope without any special filters at all.